Welcome back to SF Vortex, everybody. We are in the war room for what should be a pretty lively discussion about horror flicks and the boundaries that they sometimes cross. And I'm joined today by Anthony C. Ferrante, a freelance writer and critic for a number of genre magazines. And war room regular Robert Meyer Burnett is back. Sci-Fi Universe Magazine's critic at large and a film editor whose latest flick, The New Gods, will be featured at the first annual Hermosa Beach Film Festival at the end of the month. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. And Nancy Mullins is here, a former television producer who is currently working as an independent filmmaker. All right. First of all, thanks for being here. Let me, get, let me just touch on something uh, just for a moment here. The uh, Heaven's Gate suicides, a terrible tragedy down there in, in San Diego. The media, especially the Internet, throwing in that whole sci-fi angle here. Uh, Anthony Ferrante, is sci-fi getting a bad rap here? Uh, sci-fi is getting a bad rap, much like horror movies get a bad rap in the sense that, uh, you know, they're, they're blaming science fiction for destroying people's minds or whatever. And then they turn into these cult members, you know. Horror movies don't provoke people to go out and turn into serial killers. They're screwed up to begin with. Is it and a case guys, of sci-fi fans going way overboard? Yeah, of course it is. It's right? just the same thing as if anybody takes, like, uh, you know, the Godfather seriously and runs out and decides to start a mob or something. Or you know? soccer hoodlums yeah. that beat yeah. each other up yeah. at, at yeah. soccer games in Britain. It's, it's the just same an extreme. Thing. It's, a yeah. it's an extreme. There have been people running around going to all those Star War, you know, Star Trek conventions for years with those pajama outfits on, and they're not going to kill themselves. Right. There's I've a lot more like of that. them out there than there are people like this, and and very possibly, these people would have used anything to like hang their their neuroses on. But so it's turned fiction, out to be sci-fi. Science fiction is about imagination. I mean, ultimately, that's what it's about. It champions imagination. And all this does is it takes away from that and says that, oh, you know, you're a geek or you're, you know, there's you're something wrong with you for liking this stuff. And that, you Do know, you think they used it? I, Do you I, think I, those people actually used it sort of as a plausibility? For them, I, I think I think it was, a, it was it was an excuse for them. I think in some respects, it's like the, they fabricated this whole thing, and they were so caught up in their own world that you know this was the only thing that they could justify what they were doing. I mean, they were cutting you know their members off and stuff. I mean, that was, it's, that's kind of an extreme. Well, the net's getting think? a bad I mean, the net's getting a bad rep too. Robert, I mean, what do you think? That's like well, unfortunately, I mean, after thirty years, almost thirty years of of taking this subject matter and the genre very seriously, now I have my grandmother calling me up again and saying, "Well, you know that sci-fi stuff." You're not. It's wacky. Well, you know, all of a sudden I'm suspect. Does and, your grandmother and, uh, watch SF Vortex? That's the big question. She watches tapes okay, of SF good. Vortex. Okay, good. All right. All right. She let's, really thinks you're cute, by the way. She does. Yeah. She's single? That's, we'll talk no. about that later. Okay, let's get to Crash. Okay, David Cronenberg's latest Crash. film. Okay, my first question. I gotta ask you, I didn't think the movie was that good. Anthony, good movie or bad movie? Um, I think it's a, bit, a little bit of both. Um, I've seen the movie twice. First time I saw it, um, didn't know what to think. A lot, a lot of times... I had see, no idea what to well, think. Well, Cronenberg does that to you when you see these movies. You know, sometimes there's a lot of things going on. The second time I saw it, I understood it a lot more. Um, not necessarily thinking it's a great film, but I think it's a very good film because it, it explores things that you, know, you don't get to see on, fi on film anymore. And Cronenberg's one of the few filmmakers you know, pioneering things that you don't see. I mean, he, NC-17, this is like the third studio-released NC-17 movie. And, you know, it, it's interesting. It's an intriguing movie. Um, Nancy? I liked it. it Come a, on. It was a hybrid of Last Tango and Blade Runner. What did you like about it? Be a little more specific. What did you like about it? What really worked for you? I liked the eroticism. Yeah? I liked the cars and the sex. And okay. the, um, the whole idea of the... Futuristic aspects of it are interesting. Robert, Al uh, Robert Altman, I almost called you for God's sake. I wish. Robert Meyer Burnett, what do you think? I think it's a great film. As a matter of fact, I think it's one of Cronenberg's best movies. Stop it. Absolutely. Really absolutely, I think it's one of his best films. No, no, I, 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 no. I disagree. No, I, I, no, I, I, no, I, I think, think the no, film. It doesn't work on a lot of levels. Too. And actually, really, it, it, when it goes from being. They basically throw in the technological aspect of it to give the story someplace to go. And yeah, no, they I, just, I just and they, it's, a, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. Look at all you have people today, body piercing, doing all kinds of weird things to incorporate into their physical right. pleasure. Right. Well, and, and and the thing is, that's what this car crash metaphor was all about. I mean, it doesn't matter what what your fetish or your your kink is. The reshaping of the human body by modern technology. They dump that scene. It like falls like a big rock but, in yeah, the middle of the movie. That's a Cronenberg theme from way back from his very I early I know, but movies. that's what makes it but see, but see, it, just, it just pl flies out of there. You're thinking, this is going to be the movie. This is Cronenberg. This is what he's trying to do with the movie. But and it, it comes out of film. nowhere. It Anthony, I was film. watching it a porno movie. It was not a porno. It was not a porno movie. Showgirls is porno. This is not a series of like, you know, oh, hi, how's it going? Let's have sex. This is like... Yeah, but the acting in Showgirls Every not, character you call this a sci-fi movie. No, where's the sci-fi? Sci no. Where? No. What's okay, sci-fi? Wait, 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 wait. It's, not this sci -fi. Is a, it's subtextual you know, sci-fi. No, no. The, the science fiction writer Brian Aldiss said that science fiction 
is a questioning of our confused state of knowledge in our technological age. Okay. All right. That is what this film is really about. It's about as we progress technologically, how are we going to incorporate technology and new ways of thinking into what it means to the human and experience? He's been doing that and ever since our, Videodrome. Exactly. You know, it, even earlier, you know, even Stereo I mean, Crimes first, of the Future. His, his, he's his doing first this films kind of stuff. Well, yeah, just all this was already a book. This was already a concept that was discussed in a book. And which is 1971, it's funny, I think too. That from, it's been around from a for male ages. and female perspective, it becomes two completely different things. Did you get sci fi out of this movie, Nancy? No, no. absolutely not. I, I did not, not get that fine. I like spaceships. the film, but the, the, the film ideas. was about it was it was a an erotic film about to say technology. The least. Basically, we call it benevolent psychopathology is the term that's used in the film, and that's basically just an excuse to be talking about some very very disturbing issues that have to do with some very very rough uh, people, some very narcissistic people. Some people who are already promiscuous, and I think it so just pushes people, it. It pushes it. I mean, the film was it could have been anybody. It could have been anybody in any small town. Cars and sex in the American dream of freedom. I think that really encompasses what it is. Cronenberg did very similar types of things in the Naked Lunch, and that had nothing to do but with science but fiction. But the thing is, it's, if you go into this movie. Cornwick says you have to come into this movie having seen my other movies. You have to come in here ready to that think. That would help. Because okay. the thing is, it, it's thematic. It fits with his other that movies. Would help. If you go in cold, you're going to hate it. You're going to just say, I hate this film. But not necessarily. But probably, yes, you do. I, I don't think people that have not seen all the rest of my movies have a hate. If I don't go that, over a break, hold on one second. Hold that thought. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, folks. There's a lot more colliding going on here in the war room, all when SF Vortex continues. All right, welcome back to SF Vortex. We are still in the war room with Nancy Mullins, Robert Burnett, and Anthony C. Ferrante. Let's go to a viewer letter, shall we, gang? No. Okay. No. One of our viewers, Scott Henry, writes, I don't find films based on Clive Barker's work, for example, to be scary because there's nothing I can relate to. Hmm. Interesting letter. Nancy, how does this tie into Cronenberg's library? What do you think? Well, for one thing, everyone in America can relate to cars and sex and technology. It's a, an age-old theme. Okay. And that's also something for people that is very, very terrifying because they're afraid of sex, afraid of sexuality because of the old puritanical you know, thing that's been going in this country for a long time. And on the other hand, they're terrified of technology. So this is a double threat because it keeps people in their seats and makes them watch both. Anthony Ferrante, people are really scared of their own sexuality. Everybody scared? <laughs> well, you know, Terrified. I mean, you could be, you could assert a lot of different things, but I mean, I think being scared of a Cronenberg film is, is, is more on a, on a subconscious level because Cronenberg deals with things that, you know, may, maybe you don't want to like confront. I mean, uh, Videodrome, he's talking about, you know, th this is way before video revolution, that, you know, you're becoming interactive with your TV and stuff, concepts that are now becoming reality, vi virtual reality and all this kind of stuff. Sexuality, of course they're afraid of sexuality, or this movie wouldn't have been, been so controversial. Well, people don't know about, people don't know how to handle sex in films. You know, um, here's an example. Cronenberg, Cronenberg has never been apologetic about his sexuality. He's but, always dealt with strong wait, sexual What's things. your example? And that's why people are scared. Here's my example. Uh, Lord of Illusions, I was talking with Clyde Barker about this when the movie test screen there was a sex scene and it was actually one of the one of the best sex scenes I've ever seen because it wasn't a lot of sex but it was very tender and very nice test audiences booed it they, they laughed and giggled and they cut it out of the film because audiences couldn't handle the sex and the horror and what Cronenberg does is he says here I'm putting this in there and but I'm putting this other stuff it's all about horror. sex it's all about fear it's I about mean, penetration it's, knives it's, going into no, people and stuff yeah, but how do you account for it's the eroticism in this film I mean, too the... how do you account for the eroticism in this film too because it's not just sex and horror and that also goes back to Frankenstein and you know Clive Barker and all the way through with, with it, uh, horror equals sex and all that kind of thing but this is also a very, very strongly erotic film. And Extremely. as a woman sitting well, no. in the audience, I could that was not lost on me. But do you really there. find the movie erotic Plus, uh, simply because it has sexual content? Did you find it I, I to be erotic? I mean, is it something you can conjure up later on? The after envelope, it pushes the envelope because it goes one step further. And the whole concept of talking about the what is it in the movie, the, the, the manipulation of the human body by modern technology gets into the whole area of self-mutilation, they go into homoeroticism, I mean they're going into a whole lot of areas that 
First and of basically all, Cronenberg's saying, bring it all on. It's all good. All the varying forms of sexuality. Back to his early works when he coined the phrase omnisexuality. And it really gives yeah, people he, something he, he loves to, it all. to hate. But, it really gives them something to but hate. He, said, because, he said that he well, loves how about, how about now, okay, Cronenberg in this movie, people who get off on car accidents, James Spader basically having sex with Rosanna Arquette's leg in the backseat of a car. Yeah. Let's face it. Is he going too far? No, Has he, he taken it too far, Anthony? Okay, okay, here's the thing. He's not taking it too far because, he, you know, he, as he said before, he could, to go far, he would show a close-up of the wound that he penetrated. That, that scene is done in a very sexual way. There, you don't see anything gratuitous, and that shows restraint. I mean, if he wants to offend people, this thing could have been like, you know, Absolutely. wall Nancy, to wall. Nancy, too far? What do you think? No. Oh, you had to think about it, though, for a minute, didn't you? <laughs> no, not too far. Not too far. I, I, I question the level of filmmaking as opposed to the idea that it's a, it's a great concept and certainly came from the book, and it's a great concept that Cronenberg has not always done a very effective job with in terms of occasionally they have to go to a sex scene just to keep the, uh, the, keep the storyline going, and that's, that I doesn't see, really work. See, I don't think that's true. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think... The story, I don't, is, the story is the sex Every sex scene tells I mean, something. Yeah, aside from establishing the relationship that uh, Deborah Unger and James Spader's characters have in the film, it also, I mean, each sex scene progressively takes James Spader deep deeper and deeper into believing uh, Vaughn's psychopathology, right. BS line yeah. that he's delivering. Well, that's and it's, the only character it's, that it's, James Spader But that's the whole thing. Cronenberg, but Cronenberg's movies are all about... every man who gets pulled into some kind of weird But that's place, what Cronenberg's you know? movies are about. They're about sort of off-kilter individuals like Max Wren in Videodrome mm -hmm. or, or Oliver Reed's Dr. Uh, Hal Raglan in... Um, in uh, the brood, bringing Samantha Egar into this bizarre that cult, makes and, 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 and there, there's, that there, makes there you go too far. the protagonist Samantha. of this film. I gotta get out of here. Can you believe it? We're out of time already. That's it. I gotta go to a break. Thank you very much for coming, Robert Meyer Burnett, Nancy Mullins, Anthony C. Ferrati. Want to thank you all for being here. Don't go anywhere, folks. There's plenty more in the vortex in just a moment. <laughs>